Yeah, I got a lot of stories on this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have to go back to the SEC championship game to appropriately discuss the Texas game. Um, our whole off season was about Florida, about getting over the hump, about beating Florida, about about finding a way to get, to get it done and to ultimately, you know, overtake. And once we achieved that, there was there was a real cognizant effort from Coach Saban to remind us that that was not the finish line. <laughs> you know, hey, we we still have one more, guys. Like, don't you know, have a parade just yet. We still have one more. Yes, we beat the team that we had set out to beat twelve months ago, but you guys will, you will just you know wither away to nothing if we lose this championship game. You know, that was basically it. So, uh, a big theme of bowl practice was actually miracle, and and the movie Miracle, and because. I didn't know this until I saw the movie <laughs> that when the U S beat the Soviets, it was in the semifinal game and that her Brooks, of course, the head coach of the miracle hockey team, he had said something along the lines of you guys will never bleep and forgive yourselves. If you lose this game, when they're sitting there up one against Sweden or whoever it was in the championship so <laughs> for the gold medal. So th that was the theme is that, the work is not done. We got to continue. Yes, it's cool that we set out to beat these guys. We got it done. Now there's more work to do. When we were preparing for Texas, I had broken ribs. I had broken them on the last play of the third quarter of the SEC championship game. Uh, I was still able to practice, but not without pain. It was a very difficult five-week stretch for me. It was awful. Uh, if anyone that's broken ribs, I I'm going to pray for you because it's just it's just something I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy, I was just in a lot of pain. We couldn't quite diagnose it. They didn't see cracks initially. And then we got the cat or an MRI and you could see them pretty obviously. So, um, had to, a lot of my Christmas was spent rehabbing that and practicing, uh, to the best of my ability. We we're a little limited on what we could do. I couldn't really drive the ball really far, but I was pretty good on the underneath and didn't have a lot of issues with that. But we yeah, really knew question with that. Could you have played in the playoff game? Had it been set up like it has been the last few years? <laughs> they would have to literally amputate my right arm not to allow me to play in a playoff game. So, and then in which case I would try to throw left-handed. I just don't know how effective. And at that point, uh, I don't know if I would have been, if they did remove my right arm, I don't know if I would have been uh, the best man for the job. Uh, so um, I was, I would play. Well, I, I don't care. I didn't tell my mom uh, about the ribs. I thought she'd be a nervous wreck. My dad knew and a small contingent, around the facility knew, but not everybody, uh, very few people. It was something we really tried to keep quiet. So, um, moving into the practices, we watched the tape of Texas. I watched all 12 games, 13 games actually, cause they had just played Nebraska in the big 12 championship. And we noticed pretty quickly that the strength of their unit was really in the back end. They were an excellent secondary. So I was like, Phew, thank goodness. <laughs> you know, probably not going to have to throw it to a lot tonight. That's their strength. Let's not let Earl Thomas take over the game because he was their deep free safety. He was an amazing player. Aaron Williams was one of their corners. He was excellent as well. Their other corner was really good. And then Blake Gideon was more of a box safety, but was a really solid, solid piece. And then their pass rush was also excellent. They were really good on the edges. Uh, had a couple of defensive tackles that played in the show, but certainly, Sergio Kendall was their alpha dog and we had to really make sure that we limited his contributions, but still to this day, I've told people this, he's one of the best defenders I've ever played against. I mean, Sergio Kendall was just amazing, really a great edge player. So we knew that our path to victory was going to have to be on the ground. Um, we were going to have to control the line of scrimmage. We're going to take care of the football. It was our recipe all year long. So it wasn't anything that we were surprised by. Then we get to game day. And we had a couple interesting formations for them that we thought we could get them in, but our traditional standard sets, we didn't think we had a great matchup on the perimeter, even though Julio was great. Julio had had, had been a little bit dinged up at times throughout the season. And, you know, he was going to be kind of more of a decoy than anything else. Hey, if you can just keep Gideon over the top of you or Earl Thomas over the top of you, that's going to be great, <laughs> you know, because that's going to allow us to freely run. So Julio in the game was really more of a decoy in the plan. Um, we did have a couple things in trying to get Marquise Mays deep, did have a couple things for Darius Hanks, but not a ton. 
the the featured players in the game were going to be Mark Ingram and Trent Richardson, and they were. Uh, the offensive line was amazing in the game, as you know. And then it all really changed when Colt McCoy got hurt. They decided to run sp- speed option into Marcel Darius, which I would never do. Um, Colt, unfortunately, led with his right shoulder and then, of course, had an issue that forced him to the sideline the rest of the way. When Colt got hurt, I remember getting on the headset, talking to Mac, and he basically saying, um, how are you on your run checks? <laughs> like, are we good with our run checks? All of our run fakes, all of our, hey, this run to that run, this run to this run. Here's what we, if we want to run this, if we get this particular look. So we went through all the checks again on the sideline after Colt got hurt because we knew that we were going to shift to an ultra conservative game plan. We did that. We're up 24-3 at halftime. Everyone's kind of breathed the sigh of relief. You know, we're we're sitting there. We're like, man, we this is good. 30 more minutes. Like, come on, guys, let's go. But it was only natural for us to kind of at that point play a little bit defensive and say, man, we really don't want to lose this one as opposed to continuing to attack and going out and, and getting after it and, and setting the tone and making it happen. Um, so they get a couple big plays. They really win the third quarter and, and we didn't have a great third quarter. And then really that first part of the fourth quarter, it wasn't so fun either. We finally had to put a little bit of a drive together, switch field position, reclaim a little momentum. We pin them deep and then boom, third down a couple plays later, Eric Anders strip sack. We get it. I hand it to Ingram and it's icing on the cake. It's over. Uh, and there's a moment and you can probably look it up. I hand it off and I think it was the last touchdown where I hand it off. I know he's going in. It's a walk-in. And I just put my hands on the side of my head like this. Like, I can't believe I'm a national championship winning quarterback. Like, that was what I was saying. I, like, I can't believe we did it. Like, this is such a dream come true. This is what we came here for. And it gives me chill bumps. I'm actually getting them now, still thinking about it, because that was just such a great moment of, of success at what we'd been working for for four years and being able to deliver it for the people that have followed us from the very beginning through the early two thousands that were awful to the mid two thousands when we were average as the day is long to finally getting back to the college football mountaintop was just the most satisfying thing I've ever experienced. And to know that too, and I think I've actually grown and appreciated it more. We were so insulated at the moment, right? You're doing it for each other in the locker room. Of course, you're doing it for the school. You're doing it for the state. You're so proud. But as I've now lived in the state for the last six years, and as I've been around people, to know what that game meant to people, uh, it only gets sweeter with time. And it, it's just the the be a, a small piece of it is one of the most gratifying and humbling things I've ever experienced in my life. And I'll forever be indebted to Alabama because of it. But I'm really glad that in the five years I was there, we were able to deliver one. It's just all you could ever really want as a player. 